everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am It's Roxanne. This is Daily Rambles. Today we're doing season two, episode five of Star Girl Called Summer School, chapter five. So in Farmersville, California, ten years ago, Cindy had a nightmare, and the nightmare was after um the dad was after her and wanted to experiment on her. And her mom said, You're just having a nightmare, it's no big deal, just try to go back to sleep. So she tries. Turns out it was real because the dad did get her. And we have the present day where Cindy kind of snapped out of her flashback and um, tried to go talk to Cameron, but the grandmother was like, no, no. And she, they had a little back and forth and she said, well, at least my dad didn't get hit by a car and turned into ice cubes. And so the grandmother gave her a frosty, literal look. And, um... <laughs> she left. And then uh, Court is home after curfew and Pat busted her and um, she, he asked what she was doing. She said that she wanted to team up with uh, the Shade. And Pat was like, oh, no, 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 no. And basically the diamond is equally in bad weather and um, you know, of course, Courtney didn't find him, and then um, they're not going to work with the shade because Pat finally confessed her not to. And she said, Also, I'm sorry, I'll try to be better about curfew and not try to break it. Then there's lightning, and then uh, Cam's at school and he's using the studio because it was kind of um, gross outside. Because, like, here's the thing everywhere else in the surrounding area is sunny except for Blue Valley. It's a little like there's a storm about to come through. So that's why he's at school because he wants to use get on um, the studio. So Paul says that's fine, and um, and then the teacher looks at his sketches of Courtney says that they're really good. Then Cam, Cam talks to her, and they're just very weird interaction. <laughs> it was kind of funny and awkward. Then we cut to where Sydney Sid Cindy tries to recruit Cam and. He literally calls her out, and uh, Paul saved him on accident because she was about to take him out. <laughs> but um, anyway, so he was, so Cam said, "No, I'll just take my chances outside." And then um, let's see. Then Sid, Cindy got um, what well, basically uh, chat um, the Paul on the way out, and so Clipso got him. And it's like you're my mute. You're I'm your muse now. And I was like, okay, this is gonna be interesting. Then uh, we cut to where Paul. Okay, I already said that. Duh. Then we cut to where Barbara talks to the shade, and he made a off hit a comment that he uh, that she reminds him of family, and basically tells Courtney not to interfere. But if Courtney does find it to uh, Courtney to tell Paul and Paul to tell Barbara and Barbara to tell him. And she'll say, how do I get in contact with you? You didn't leave any information on your card. And he was like, check again. And a number showed up and he, of course, left. Then we cut to where Rick is driving and um, has a flashback of his parents leaving him and stuff like that. And then he sees uh, Cam's mural and just revs up his engine and he Cam says like do you need something and he goes not from you <laughs> and just revs his car and speeds away and he goes like jerk then Beth tells Pat about McKnighter and Rick showed up as well and was there for a whole conversation so Pat wants her, uh, warns her it could be Calypso, but Beth is right. They will find him with Rick. It's like, well, what's going to happen if it is true? So anyway. Then we cut to where Paul's not feeling good, and he in the class a little bit early, and he goes into the art room studio and throws up paint. Then Pat and Barb um, are at the junkyard because Mike was there talking to Zeke, and he wanted to buy a station wagon as a getaway get away vehicle and uh, Pat gets really stern with him then then offers him to uh, work together from the GSA on something like that small but it will help and so they hug and they head home and then we cut to where Yolanda feels a little bit better then Court goes to talk to Cam 
and he shows the sketches of her, and it's a very cute moment. Then Eclipso gives Paul to paint and to see. I was like, okay. And then we cut to where Cam bought his dad's house, you know, the house I grew up in, and uh, Court's there. And so they're talking about other stuff and like how he wants to be an artist and wants to do stuff, but then since his uh, father is no longer alive, he's okay. Anyway, so basically, he wants to kind of fall in his sister's and Corey's like, they don't want to deny the world your talent, as in your daughter, your father's a douchebag, I'm just saying. Anyway, so, um, and then a bunch of, as, so as they're about to kiss, a bunch of messages pop up, I mean, a lot of messages, and so she has to go, and she's, and he's like, you always have to leave during important moments with us. She said, I'm sorry, this is like the last time, I promise. And the grandma saw everything, and then we cut to where Beth found the epicenter, is at the school. So they notice Paul's car, so they go find him, and the art room is literally crazy. Then um, we cut to where Clint said, got y Yolanda, and then a face is coming out of the wall, and it's very gross. It's very ew. So <laughs> that was just my little perspective. Then it comes out Larry messes with all of them, and uh, we cut to where Court found Paul and helped him see the light because he said all I see is darkness. So she uses his staff to help him see the light, and it's also like an avatar moment basically because you know his mouth and every orifice was lit up with gold because of the light, and it works. And so now Paul is in a psych ward. And the team is very shaken up by this because that's never happened to them before. So we cut to where Eclipse is a lot stronger because uh, Paul asked if the diamond w was on him. He's, and they said no. He said, oh, that's not good because it's good working without the diamond in the vicinity. Then uh, the parents talk to Beth and they will talk about the divorce afterwards because they haven't gone through with it yet. But it's mutual because they're all up in their jobs and they, that's, the thing, that's the only thing they seem to care about. They don't really seem to care about Beth or their marriage. They only care about work. I was like, work is important, but not in sense of your family, in my opinion. And, and anyway, so then we cut towards uh, Sydney. Cindy, oh my God, that, this is going to trip me up forever. Anyway, she wants one piece of, she's missing one piece of a puzzle. And then, um, said it, showed a picture of a kid. I don't know who that is. It could have been Cam before he got a new haircut or something. I don't know. Anyway, then we cut to Cam and he's painting. And then all of a sudden his uh, brush is frozen and his hand starts hurting. And that was in uh, the episode. It was a really good episode. But the fact I was very creeped out by... Eclipso or or whatever coming out of the freaking wall and I still thought it was a really good episode it's saying something to me so I gave it an A plus because usually when something like that happens I'm like I'm like a stern hell no and not going to worry about it so but I gave it an A plus because it's very interesting to see what's happening in the show and I like the storyline I like how it's going because we get more of a sense of Cindy and her whole experience, how like how she didn't want to be like her father, and she turned up almost exactly like her father, and that um, Cam brought up something important. It's just like, and when her when the mom passed away, she said in class, well, I was never really like her anyway." And Cam kind of called her out on it. It's like, "You don't care about me. You don't care about my dad. You don't care about anything but yourself." So. Anyway, it was very, very interesting uh, take on the episode. So anyway, I really enjoyed it. And that's going to do it for this video. I hope y'all have a great day. And I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye, everybody.